Welcome to City Line from my kitchen to your home. It's great to be with you again. Boy, it has been a week with the smoke and the fires. And so it's really wonderful just to take a moment and sit with you. Later on in the hour, we'll be talking with Dr. William James here about a vaping town hall meeting. And he's gonna discuss vaping and the threat to teenagers and of course, what that town hall will be all about. Tacoma Little Theater will be here. Chris Surface is checking in with their remodel and what would have been their 102nd season and how they are making that happen during COVID-19. And of course, Symphony Tacoma Voices will be here. They have a wonderful gift for you, my viewers, and also the city of Tacoma. So you definitely want to hang in there for that one. Victoria will be here with our Pet of the Week from the Humane Society. And with me right now, I have three individuals who are here to talk about the Nisqually Watershed Festival. So please join me in welcoming back Daniel Hull. You are the Executive Director of the Nisqually Reach Nature Center. Welcome, my dear. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. And Sheila Wilson, hello, my dear. You are the Program Director for the Nisqually River Education Project. It's so great to see your face. And your well. Thank you. You as well. <laughs> and then this is somebody who is new to me, but not new to the two of you. I'm talking about Glennis Nakai. She is the project manager for Nisqually NWR Complex. Welcome to City Line, Glennis. Thank you. It's great to be here. Great to have all of you here. Well, let's get to it, Sheila. So for someone who perhaps, as I've said, just moved here, or perhaps is looking at nature and thinking, I need to get more involved with nature right now. What is the Nisqually Watershed Festival? Oh, our Nisqually Watershed Festival is a tradition that's more than 30 years old. We get together to celebrate the biological, ecological, cultural, historical, and economical significance of the Nisqually Watershed. So we have involvement from the Nisqually tribe, a lot of natural resource agencies, and a lot of local um, businesses and, and historical organizations as well. Oh, I love that. So Glennis, who puts on the event? It's gotta be more than just the three of you. <laughs> yes, exactly. So the planning and coordination is really spearheaded by the Nisqually Indian tribe and the Nisqually River Foundation, but it really takes a village. And that village are the Nisqually River watershed partners. So it includes the tribe, Nisqually tribe, Nisqually Land Trust, Nisqually Reach Nature Center, uh, uh, Northwest Trek, and also Tacoma Public Utilities, and also includes city and county uh, staff who help put this together. And we want to take a moment. It definitely takes a, a village. It does, and we want to say mm -hmm. thank you so much to uh, the Nisqual Nisqually Tribe for uh, allowing us to uh, be on their land. It is a very gracious and sacred gift. Um, Daniel, what is a watershed? That's a very good question. Yes, I mean, Stan, we're, we're having this festival it's celebrating a watershed. Uh, you know, I, what I like to do is give you just a little visual of what a watershed is, you know, as an interpreter and an educator, I talk about this all the time because uh, the center sits at the estuary, sort of the end of the watershed. I like to, you know, kind of just put my hands together like in a little V. And if you could imagine this hand being a hillside and this hand being a hillside, and where they come together down at the bottom is where the river's kind of flowing back and forth. And then I can put my thumbs way up high in the air, and that'd be Mount Rainier, 14,410 feet high, the snow and ice on top of the mountain coming down the river and then into the estuary at the very end where the center is located. Um, you know, once again, all the waters that drain in and, and encompass the landscape and the, that follows the Nisqually River, yeah. That was a great visual because I am a visual learner. So, Glennis, based upon what, what Daniel just said, what makes the Nisqually watershed different than other ones in our region? 
You know, I like to think that we have one of the healthiest river uh, watersheds in Pacific Northwest, I'll brag. I think what makes it so successful is the collaborative effort. You know, all of our partners, we meet once a month through the Nisqually River Council and we all keep in touch. We all know what we're doing, what the others are doing, and it's a, for a common goal. And I think that's why we are so successful in what we are protecting with that common goal of protecting the Nisqually watershed. It really takes communication and the fact that all of our partners are so, their vision is so hands-on. So they're bringing the community together and engaging them in these activities, whether they're outside or indoors nowadays with virtual activities, but getting the word out why a watershed is important and how our watershed can be even more protected with community support and partnership collaboration. Mm, beautifully said, thank you. So every year there's a theme, Sheila. How did the planning team choose this year's theme of Mountain to Sound? Well, as you can probably imagine, our festival this year will not be an in-person event. It's going to be virtual, it's going to be online. And like Glennis was saying, we do have such a special watershed with so many really unique partners. They say we're the only watershed with the headwaters in a national park and uh, the mouth of the river in a national wildlife refuge. So to really get people to wrap their brains around what does this place really look like, we wanted to get people oriented geographically. So our watershed literally starts at the top of the mountain, literally ends at the sea. So the Mount to Sound um, was a way for us to sticky organize our thoughts on creating this virtual uh, celebration. Well said, my dear. So, Glynis, as, as Sheila said, it's going to be virtual this year. And that's such an easy thing to say. But, boy, the logistics of that. <laughs> so, can you even begin to tell us how the logistics will work? So, yes, it is a challenge. This is all new to us for virtual. But it's going to be live streamed using, by uh, YouTube. And, you know, as far as the coordination and the, the puppet master, the Nisqually River Foundation staff will be that puppet master. There will be uh, pre-recorded videos and some live streaming. We'll even have a master of ceremony. So it's taken a lot to pull together a schedule and have all of our partners' videos and live events so that we can present it on the day of the festival. So it will be live streamed on YouTube. And throughout the event, the organizers are inviting the public to use social media to share their own photos, their artwork, and stories about what the Nisqually River watershed means to them. So as much as possible, it will be live streamed, but also have that uh, interaction with the, the viewers. I gotta say, your learning curve is quick, my dear. Very, very quick. <laughs> so Daniel, um, what type of topics will viewers see during this event? Because, you know, we've always had the salmon, we've had salmon art. So give us an idea of what to expect. Well, um, it is virtual this year, uh, but we reached out to our partners and our partners are like, well, let's create some content that we can record and put in. Um, and, you know, there's a laundry list of folks. I mean, it's kind of like the refuge. We're taking what we did live during the event, and we're going to be pushing that content into our streaming event. Uh, so Northwest Trek is going to be a, doing a tour. There's animals there and some great things to see. And some of this you wouldn't be able to actually get at the Watershed Festival because we have a unique, a unique opportunity to reach out to our partners and have them record content and bring it to us. Uh, there'll be a tour of Mount Rainier. I can't do that at the Watershed Festival either. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to be bringing that content in and, and following the theme of what we're looking at. Wolf Haven's going to have a, a piece. There's going to be still a dogfish dissection like we did last year, but it's going to be virtual. Uh, we're going to have some fish seining that we're going to be doing, just like last year, but it's going to be recorded. Um, you know, a lot of things are coming together um, to really 
paint that picture of the Watershed Festival, bring it online. Uh, we've got uh, an insect display that's going to be happening. Mr. Lizard is going to be presenting some fabulous reptiles. Uh, you know, it's really kind of like taking that event and just kind of pushing that content online. And a big thanks goes to Justin Hall. I mean, he is going to be a really big behind the scenes person pushing this content uh, day of the event. You know, once again, Saturday, this, you know, the 26th, the big day. Um, and we'll be practicing beforehand as well. So, yeah. And we've been showing the website where they can uh, uh, contact you for more information. One of my last thoughts is for Sheila. Sheila, as people are sitting here right now watching this, and thinking, I can't even go outside because of the smoke. And I... I'm inside because of COVID. Um, the watershed might be the last thing on their minds, but in my mind, it really should not be because it's all about nature and the climate. So why is it important to protect this watershed and what steps can we take? Um, like Glennis was saying, our watershed is so unique. Sandwiched between the metropolitan areas of Tacoma and Olympia, we have more than 75% of that river in permanent protected status forever. So learning uh, um, from our partners like the Nisqually Land Trust, how to get involved and make a difference with them. They also have a lot of um, events that even during COVID, probably not during the fires, which hopefully will dissipate, the smoke will dissipate soon. But even during COVID, when we're outside, we have our social distancing measures. We can still get out there and get our hands on the land and plant some trees and remove some invasive species. And then our everyday actions really make a difference as well. We need to remember that every time we recycle, every time you turn off the light when you're leaving the room, anything we can do to lower our carbon footprint is gonna to continue to protect our climate and our forests and therefore our watersheds. That's right, because um, this has been what we call the great reset in many, many ways. Um, and so it's now, I, I feel like it's time for us to step up and take that task and start resetting. I want to say thank you to all three of you for being here today um, and for you and your teams that, of course, we couldn't get on the Zoom um, because I know that you, the three of you, represent so many hands that have made this work light. So thank you so, so very much. And I can't wait for the time that I can get all three of you back on the comfy couch. Deal? Sounds good. Deal. Thanks for having me. Comfy couch. <laughs> Thank you.